Hello, sorry for my delay. Just I've been a busy saying goodbye to a rescue hedgehog. Um God, that was my bag. Oops. Just going to Right. Hi guys, um welcome to this episode of Theatre and Tonic. My name is Emmy. And I have been running Carpe Diem Emmy now for seven years. I cover theatre and travel and lifestyle, but primarily the theatre is what I'm really interested in. So um, I do have a very exciting guest today. I will be joined by Rob Madge, hopefully very soon, who has been doing an epic job during the pandemic. If you know them, they have been doing a lot of stuff on TikTok and they have been sharing some home videos and some sketches that have been absolutely hilarious. So hopefully Rob will be joining us very soon to chat about that and to chat about his new show that's coming to the Turbine Theatre and just a chat about their experience as a child actor. He did quite a lot in musicals as a young boy and also on some of the roles he, they've done since. So hopefully he'll be here anytime soon. Do say hello. Um, if you have any questions for Rob yourself, please drop them in the comment section below. And he is here. So they are here. So let's get them in. And let me find my questions. That would be a world clever, wouldn't it? Oh, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, sorry about the delay. I was all of a sudden like, oh no, it's four o'clock. No, don't I worry. To be no, no, don't worry. I um I had time to powder puff my face. So I, just, <laughs> I looked in the mirror, I was like, oh dear, I look very shiny today. <laughs> I had to do the same. I was like, oh no, my hair's gone a bit flat. Like, quickly, go upstairs, go and get ready. Oh, I was like, same problem. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah, I got the straighteners oh. on. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today, Rob. Honestly, Thanks for having me. your stuff over lockdown has been amazing. Like, so funny and just so lovely to, to see that side of someone, do you know, in the industry and things. Thank you. Yeah, um, I feel like it's been such a weird year, but I feel like I've met so many brilliant people this year, but not met them. It's very strange. Um, but I've like, connected with just some brilliant people over this past year so I'm glad everyone's enjoyed the stuff I've just been very bored to be honest <laughs> brilliant. so we'll get cracking so Rob to start with can you tell us a little bit about yourself to those people that maybe don't know who you are yeah um a little bit about myself I mean where where do I begin I'm um I'm very camp. I'm, <laughs> my my favourite colour is red, and um, <laughs> no, I'm um, a performer and a writer and a theatre maker. Is the sort of is one of the labels that I now go by. Um, whatever that means, I don't know. Uh, but you know, I like making theatre. I like working in theatre. I've done it since I was a child, and now I've um, yeah, I've started posting these little sketches online over the past year, and. Um, we have a show coming up um, that sort of stems from all of those videos that I posted. So, yes, I, I work in theatre, was was doing it as a kid and now still am, still plugging <laughs> away. <laughs> That's good. So where did your journey into the arts actually begin for you? Um, I know that it's something that I always wanted to do. Um, professionally, my first job was Mary Poppins in 2005 at Prince Edward. Um, I was Michael Banks. Um, but where I actually, where that actually really started for me, I, I don't know. It's something that I always knew I wanted to do. And then I found out that I was at Stagecoach at the time and I was like going there for classes every Saturday. And they said that there's, there's auditions happening for Mary Poppins. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this sounds incredible. Uh, so I auditioned for that and then got in. And, and from there, it's been sort of, it's been what I've done ever since. Excellent. And um, did you find it hard to be so into the arts at school? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, for me, anyway, uh, I went to a theatre school eventually, which was fine. And then I was surrounded by lots of like minded individuals. But before that, at primary school, I was always, always felt very different, very odd and wasn't really doing what all the other kids were, were doing. Um, so it was it was tricky then. Uh, but luckily, I had, you know, a supportive family who 
who raised me to to go after all of those ambitions um because at school here and i mean i live in the middle of nowhere in the midlands as well it's like yeah it's it's very tiny sleepy village and i think i'm the only theatrical <laughs> the only theatrical one at school i was then anyway i don't know about now <laughs> that's always a good label to have though the theatrical okay. yeah the theatrical one <laughs> yeah i've sort of ran with that ever since <laughs> So obviously you're a fellow Midlands person. Um, I'm from Leicester, so go on Midlands. Come on, Leicester, um, pick up the Midlands. <laughs> so you studied English Lit at the University of Warwick, which I found really mind-blowing. What made you do English Lit and why did you kind of move away from the arts to study? Um, I'd always, I'd done it for so long, I think. I say, I say that as though I was a veteran. I mean, I was 18 years <laughs> old. <laughs> I was still very young. But I was like, you know, I've, I've, I've treaded the boards for a good portion of my life. And I, I did genuinely just want to sort of experience something a little bit different and and maybe see it, make sure that theatre was what I definitely wanted mm. to do. I, I never wanted to think, damn, I've been so caught up in the bubble for so long and never experienced anything else. Um, so that's really why I went. And then I went to university and I was like, yeah, I do want to do theatre. <laughs> so I'm glad I did it because um, it taught me that, if anything. But I had a great time at uni. I mean, all I did was spend the majority of my time with, you know, the drama society and the musical theatre clubs and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, and I did a degree in English because really it's the only academic thing I was ever any good at. I mean, even <laughs> even then, I, I would still tailor all of my modules to be plays and <laughs> Shakespeare. And <laughs> I never really left. Because <laughs> I guess that's the thing, though. I guess when you're like a child star, say, you kind of get caught up in it, don't you? And I guess for some people, they don't get that break, do they, to experience other things? Yeah, that, that was it, really. Um, I'm very glad that... I made that decision at first I was like oh is this a good idea because I'm going to be out of the loop for so long and then will people remember me if I ever decide to come back um but it's all worked out okay so I I'm glad I I'm glad I took the step away yeah so obviously your first West End show was Mayor Poppins and so what was it like doing such a big show at such a young age oh I mean it was a dream and it was you know it's a Disney big Disney musical Mary Poppins was always one of my favorite Disney films growing up um, it was just amazing and because I was so young and it was my first show um, I never found out how any of the magic worked I still don't know how half of the, how that carpet bag works I genuinely do not know <laughs> because you can you can see the stage managers how they're doing it but when you're looking at it from an audience I still don't know how it how any of it works um, so it was it was genuinely quite magical and everyone made made the kids feel so welcome and special in that show I mean the kids are in that show forever I mean they're never off stage they're a huge part mm. of the show and so it's overwhelming but everyone made sure everyone was really comfortable and happy it was great mm. I loved it so do you have a favorite memory of doing that show probably my first night um I remember I mean it wasn't my best performance. I forgot loads of words and all that stuff. But just that first scene where in the prologue of the show, like a spotlight hits each of the Banks family. Mm. It's like Bert sings a father, a mother, a daughter, a son. And I'm sat and I'm stood there. And I'm like, oh my God, the spotlight's just hit Jane. The spotlight's about to hit me. And then it hits me and I'm like, oh, I've made it, mama. <laughs> <laughs> on the West End. <laughs> um, yeah, that was probably just the greatest moment ever I don't think it'll ever beat that that was such a oh, great moment I'm glad I remember it as well <laughs> yeah because I guess I think sometimes as you grow older you don't remember those little things sometimes do you no. sometimes it, I think it hits me more now I'm getting older sometimes I'm like oh my god I remember doing that at school or yeah you know and I'm like oh that's a really weird memory to remember yeah same it's been that this has been this past year for me you know suddenly unlocking all, all of these memories that I'd sort of stored away in a box um it's been quite strange but yeah yeah there are things that I just will always treasure from that show it was what it was so nice so nice mm. lovely and obviously you also did Les Mis um you did the 25th anniversary concert if yes. that's right yeah so yeah. what was it like doing that show after a break from kind of musical life yeah um well, when I did it as a kid, I was still like very much within, I played lots of Cockney children by that point. So I was, <laughs> I was very used to it. Um, and, then, uh, and then I went back to it when I was an adult after having a big breakaway. And that was bizarre. That was strange. That was a, a nice full circle moment. Um, 
but people often ask what's it like doing lamers twice as a child and as an adult and the only answer i can give is like it's just as an adult there's so many more hats you have to wear like literally <laughs> constantly you're a policeman and you're in in the factory and then yeah <laughs> then you're wearing a suit on the barricade lots of costume changes as an adult <laughs> um but it's the set it was just amazing it was great to go back to it but yeah the 25th anniversary was was a wild time and was it quite hard to go back into that after kind of having a break because i guess it's it's very different work like doing stuff with like a society isn't it and then to go back into something so big was it quite hard to kind of find your feet with the rhythm of that life again yeah it was although part of it was I wanted to say to the, you know the musical theatre societies that I was at uni with I was like wow you're actually you're all doing it right like this is how it actually works <laughs> for the most part uh, I felt like I got some good training doing those shows at Warwick <laughs> um yeah it was it was very strange and I was very lucky to get that job. I was just out of drama school. So after I went to Warwick, I had a year out and then mm. decided that theatre was definitely what I wanted to do. So I did a master's in musical theatre at the Royal Academy of Music and straight out of there, I got Les Mis. So it was a, a really crazy year because it was an intense course. Um, mm. And then as soon as that's done, I was off on tour and then the pandemic happened. So it's all been a bit of a whirlwind. Um, but I know, I know, very sad, but... Hopefully yeah. things are all improving now. <laughs> Hopefully. So obviously, as you say, during the pandemic, you kind of became a bit of a social media star. <laughs> Something like We're that. Gonna, we are going to say you're right. You know, so what made you share the old videos and create these comedy sketches? What was it that kind of drew you to this kind of work? Well, I've always been a bit of a writer and I've always wanted to sort of put my own work out there. But I've never really had the time to sit down and work out what sort of angle I want to approach it from and I mean I've wasted so much time trying to work all that out when it's all been there <laughs> in these videos <laughs> for years it's like Mary Poppins says that thing where she's like it's right under your nose um Why you know, was I, so I don't know when, it's <laughs> when I said it's right under Whoa. your nose it's up to your nose I was like oh <laughs> but yeah it was always there all along um and I wanted to start sharing them just because they made me laugh, to be honest. And, um, you know, as the attention seeker that all performers are, I was like, someone else laugh, please. I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be the only one. So I'm glad people did laugh, because otherwise I'd have felt very stupid. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is so funny. And then <laughs> silence. So <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad people like them. But I wanted to share them also, because no one could be in theatre at the time. We were all stuck at home. And I thought there was something quite nice in seeing this footage of performers when we were young in our living rooms, essentially doing what we've had to do this past year, you know, stream concerts from home, uh, mm. work from home, all of that stuff. And I was like, well, let's go back to those living room performances. Um, and I think it will remind people of why we all started doing this weird industry in the first place, you know. And I bet it was quite nice for you to kind of see your younger self in those videos. And do you think you're yeah. quite different now or do you think you still have the same? Yeah, I do think, I mean, I hope I'm different. <laughs> I hope I'm easier to work with, <laughs> is what I hope more than anything. Um, I think there's like, the creativity is still there. I still will, I don't know, make costumes out of any old tat that I find around the house. <laughs> but, um, but it is funny looking back and I sort of have to remove myself from that child because I'm like, wow, that is... It's very strange, <laughs> very, very control freak of a, of a child. Um, and I hope I'm not like that anymore. I definitely, <laughs> I don't get quite as angry when, you know, tech cues go wrong and all that stuff now. <laughs> but I, I think I've come into my own. I think then I was just a very insecure, you know, everything had to be correct. I'm a bit more chilled out now. <laughs> Some of the videos though are just so funny, especially when you get your family involved. And they are. I guess for you, has that been quite fundamental for you with your work to have that support? Because yeah. obviously that's so clear to see in your videos, even from when you were yeah. younger. And, you know, yeah. you're telling your family what to do. Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah, I always say that they, they never had a choice in the matter, you know. <laughs> you were going to support me whether you <laughs> like it or not. And um, bless them, they did. <laughs> and it has been. I mean, it helps massively when you have that um, support from such a, an early age. It just makes makes everything easier, you know. Just makes the journey through life a lot less stressful without having the extra worry of oh my family don't support me for this without having that yeah. worry 
it makes life better. Yeah, they've been great. And are you going to get them involved in your new show? Have you kind of just told them to hang up their responsibility a bit? Yeah, they, they're going to be my dressers. They're going to be my wiggies. They're going <laughs> to... They need to be there, you know. They, they know you better than anyone else. Honestly. It, it, it was it was the plan at one point then i the practicalities and the feasibility of it did, didn't quite work out <laughs> but they they will be there in some form <laughs> you can imagine so do you have a particular favorite old home video that's like really stuck with you since you've seen it i think it'll always be um the disney parade that i put on in in my house just because everything that could go wrong did <laughs> And, that, and that's just why I like it so much. At the time, it was the biggest failure and the biggest disaster of my career so far. I mean, I, I thought that was it. My life was over. I'm never going to have a career again. I'm not going to work again. Uh, and, then, and then years later, it turns out to be the one that makes people laugh. And, and that's, that's great. We've shifted the narrative a little bit, which I enjoy. We've, we've reclaimed the joy in such a dark moment of my life. <laughs> brilliant so obviously now the success of what you've done has been turned into a show which is so exciting I guess for you so can you tell us a little bit about it um yeah so essentially um I'm going to be recreating the Disney parade that I put on in my in my house um but in order to do that you know I'm a very serious actor so I have to do my research and you know do all of my actor actor method acting all of that stuff so in order to do, to do that properly I have to go through the archives of these old home videos and all the memorabilia that we have around the house you know of when I was in Mary Poppins and all these school reports and when I was in stagecoach and it's basically all of all of these different little pieces of a jigsaw that will come together to hopefully create a really spectacular Disney <laughs> Disney parade um, in, in your living room is the plan so we're taking everyone back to the performances in in their living room and also showing that you know raising a flamboyant son can be quite fun and chaotic and joyful um and not quite so scary as some people make it out to be it's not that scary and, <laughs> and i guess it's quite nice to do that kind of digging in and kind of using kind of your personal journey as such rather than because obviously for you a lot of the time you're playing someone else but actually it's just about you being yourself so that must be quite a nice thing for you to do. It's lovely. It's it's quite bizarre as well. When I'm writing it, I'm like, this is strange to write Rob colon dialogue. <laughs> this is really weird. So I sort of have to remove myself a little bit and um, sort of, I mean, it's a very heightened version of me. Everything that I talk about in the play is true, has happened. But the whole, you know, the premise, I'm not actually recreating my <laughs> It's all for this show, you know. So um, it's sort of a character, but all very real at the same time. And it's been a very strange thing to write and look back on all these, all this memorabilia and all this stuff. But I hope it's um, fun. I hope people, I hope mm -hmm. people have a good time when they watch it. And I guess it's, it's such a nice thing to come out of the pandemic because it has been such a challenging year. And I guess for yourself, it's been really challenging not to have a lot of work. So I guess it's kind of been your light at the end of the tunnel during this time hasn't it, it really has yeah I mean that's again one of the reasons why I wrote it to have something to focus on um to have like an ambition and a goal and if it if it all pays off and I get to see the show great but if I don't I can still just work towards something was my initial thought and then luckily that <laughs> we, we are putting it on um which just blows my mind really even when I think about it that it's happening uh, but it has always been something that I'm like uh pinning my hopes on so it's given me a, a little bit of purpose in, in all of this mayhem I guess. So has it been a challenge for you putting this together during this time or has it kind of been quite easy? It, it has been really I think one, one of the most challenging parts of it is um, staying focused to what the show is about I mean because we've just got so much video footage <laughs> I could have put so much in there and it's it was a case of really narrowing it down and make sure it's focused and 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 tight and 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 did and said what it needed to say um but uh it's been it's been a challenge sort of getting all videos together and editing them and working out how they're going to play all the technicalities of it are, are a bit mad and I've never done a one-man show before so why I chose my first one to be one that's quite so te technical. I'm not, 
<laughs> I'm not so sure, but um, <laughs> made a rod for my own back. But luckily, a great got a great team involved who've who've eased all of those challenges quite significantly. So, what do you hope people will get from seeing your show? I really hope that, first of all, that it's joyful, that it's um, a really fun night out at the theatre is my number one goal um and my my second goal <laughs> is that um people leave having learned something about um queer youth in some in some way shape or form uh for those who who are queer and can relate this story is for them so i hope they see themselves in it and for those who aren't necessarily part of the community um i really hope it sheds some light on you know something that they might not be aware of or, or and why not is what I want people to be asking why am I not aware of this what is just fun I could have I've missed out on so many fun opportunities I just want to encourage people to throw on a wig uh, it's it's not gonna change it's not gonna um end the world if you if no. just if you just have fun and raise your kids with love is essentially what yeah. I hope people get from it but we'll see maybe no one will get that <laughs> I hope they do <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they will. So what has been your favourite bit about the show so far and putting it together? Is there a particular bit in it already that you kind of, wow, I can't wait to see how that kind of comes about? Yes, there is. There's there's um there's a few there's quite a lot of videos actually that I've never shared um online because I, I wanted to save them for this show. Um so when when those moments happen I'm very I'm very excited to see. And I, I'm very excited to really sort of um praise my family give them their due um in the way that it's been written and the way and some of the stuff that I talk about um yeah I'm, I'm proud to sort of showcase them in, in a way um because they bloody deserve it <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I'm looking forward to doing all that so obviously now theatres are open which is great news and besides your show how are you feeling about everything kind of going back to normality well I'm buzzing to be honest I'm I'm so excited and, and cautious <laughs> um because you know we don't want to raise all of our hopes too soon because we've seen what happens <laughs> in the past when we mm. do that um but i'm i'm very cautiously optimistic and and hopeful and looking forward to seeing to seeing everywhere reopen and to just see the boards taken down from these theaters to see the prince edward finally have mary flying again i think it's mm. going to just be amazing yeah absolutely and do you think this time from away from theatre and obviously having this year away from kind of normality for yourself, do you feel like you've learned something new about yourself? Yes, hugely. I think um, this show would never have happened. I would never have written a show with the, with the word queer in the title, to be totally honest, even a year ago, even two years ago, because I just wasn't... Um, proud enough I wasn't confident enough or comfortable enough to talk about that part of my life and I really think it's in this year off where we've been away from such a fast-paced world where we've had time to reset and to reflect and to think and we don't have that time when when you're just going from audition mm -hmm. to audition or interview to interview or, or whatever in your job um, and having that breathing space really just made me think well What's the harm? What harm is it going to do? Like I say, the world's not going to end if I'm suddenly proud of who I am. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it will just open more doors and more opportunities and possibilities. So, yeah, I feel like a completely different person, to be honest. Um, it's been a journey. It's an ongoing journey. But, you know, um, mm. yeah, it was it was good to have to have that time to really to think about. Well, the world is quite literally up in arms at the minute. So me finally exploring more of my gender identity is a drop in the ocean compared to everything yeah. else that's going on. When, the work, when your problem seems so big and magnified, I think last year really sort of, I don't know, quelled those fears. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah I absolutely agree. And what do you hope for theatres as they emerge out of the dark? Is there things that you kind of think there needs to be more of? Because yeah. I think this past year has caused a lot of conversation. Um, yeah, so it has. Do you agree that there needs to be more done? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think that um, we've had some brilliant conversations and now it's all opening up. It's time to actually put them into action. Uh, I really hope that, you know, we've learned, I really hope that we have learned things from this past year and it's not just been, you know, 
um, lip service and just, um, you know, virtue signaling. I really hope, I really hope there's action made. Mm -hmm. and, it, and if there is, it will just make everything so much more exciting. The, the, the theatre that, we'll, that we will get, if people are willing enough to open their eyes and to listen to these conversations that, that we've had over the past year, it will make everything so much more exciting. Um, people will be telling their own stories. It will be really representative of the world we actually do live in, reflected back at us on a, on a stage. I think that's really cool. If, so I hope so. I really do hope so, yeah. Yeah, me too. So one last question, Rob. Um, so how can people book tickets for your show? And why should they? <laughs> why should they? Oh, I, don't, I don't bloody know, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> don't waste your time. No, um, <laughs> you can book tickets at um, the Turbine, the Turbine Theatre, their website, or call the box office. Do people still do that? I don't know. Um, but it's called, uh, it's My Sons Are Queer, But What Can You Do? We open on June the 17th, and we're going through to July the 3rd. And the ticket link is actually in my instagram bio as well um any any excuse to plug that i will um <laughs> and why should people see it um because it's a, a joyful celebration of why we all fell in love with theater whether you go to the theater whether you are involved in theater hopefully it will remind you of why we all fell in love with it in the first place and it will be uplifting and joyful and hopefully you might learn a few things or two from it yeah and i, I think as well it's it's fair to say as well with Pride Month obviously kicking in, it's kind of the perfect show to go and watch this month. Honestly, that yeah, it's all um, it's all worked out in 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 my favour to be honest. I'm like yes, <laughs> so glad to have it Pride, in Pride Month. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Rob. Thank I really you. appreciate you coming along and having a bit of a chat about your show. And I can't wait to see more videos. So get Aww. them out. I will do. They're so good. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. You know, you're welcome. Take care and good luck with the show. You too. Thank you. Well, thank <laughs> you. You too take care, I mean. <laughs> and good luck with any show that you do. <laughs> Bye. See you Bye. later, Rob. Take care. Bye. So that was a quick chat with Rob Madge. I really hope you enjoyed that Q&A. It was really good to chat with him about his new show. So please make sure that you book your tickets over at the Turbine. Or as he said, just head over to his Instagram. I will save this live so then you can go directly to him. Um, take care, I'm going to head off now and I will be back with another episode of Theatre and Tonic very soon. Take care, goodbye!